after I answer, after I ask my question, can I get a handshake? Yeah, sure. All right, awesome. <clears throat> So uh, just context, um, I've been actively promoting this event and inviting people to debate you in the Q&A, and many people thought that even if they were right, you would still win the debate due to your position of authority and argument argumentative wit. And so I'm here today to try I mean, they're right, I'll win, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm here to try my best to stump you and uh, maybe show the naysayers it's possible, but I, okay. I doubt it, like you said. Um, if you ask me to do long division in my head. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you state in an article titled, quote, Why Atheism is Morally Bankrupt, that, quote, without God, there is no capacity for free will. And you repeat the sentiment multiple times. Yes. You consistently claim to be able to pose secular arguments to support any of your claims, but it seems that your belief in free will is entirely rooted, rooted in religious argument. And you seem to indicate that if you had to take a secular view on the topic of free will, you would be forced to take a determinist position. Considering that the free will topic is at the core of the justice system, it seems to me that your arguments in favor of retributive justice are solely supported by religious arguments. Can you pose a secular argument in favor of free will? Sure. I mean, I think that most atheists believe in free will and disagree with my central premise. So if I want to play atheist, I would say that there is a secular argument in favor of free will. As a religious person, I don't think it's a particularly compelling one. So, it's, so in other words, the, the point that I'm making here is that you're right. Free will is at the, is at the center of the criminal justice system. Yeah. I believe that the argument in favor of free will has to rest on supernatural premises. Because otherwise, what you're basically saying is that human beings are a combination of their genetics and their environment. Mm -hmm. And if we just had a giant machine and we could pour all that information into a machine, then I could predict with perfect certainty what you were going to say next. Right? As it is, my machine's great. I can mostly predict what you're going to say next. But if I, could, if I had all that information, then I could perfectly predict that, and then you wouldn't have any personal responsibility. And I haven't heard a great argument from atheists about why that's the case. Now, I say that it's a supernatural force. You can believe it's not a supernatural force, mm -hmm. but I think that you can say from a secular point of view that you can, you can believe free will exists without God existing. I don't think it's a compelling argument, mm -hmm. but I think you can do that. And, and I've argued with secular people without mentioning God in the free will argument all the time. I mean, if you're an atheist, are you an atheist? Yes. Okay, so you're an atheist. Do you believe free will exists? No. You don't believe free will exists. So you tell me, how does the criminal justice system function? Yeah, so I would, uh, I would recommend a quarantine theory where you basically view someone as an actor and so, in an example, let's say someone um, is violent with someone else, mm -hmm. you would say, okay, well, well, as a determinist, I'd say, when you make a decision, you could not have chosen otherwise. So I'd view this actor and I'd say, well, uh, you couldn't have chosen otherwise, so I don't, I don't hold you morally culpable, but it still tells me a lot about how you're liable to act in the future, and so we're going to treat you as a public health hazard and uh, quarantine But that's not off. true. I mean, the, the problem with that argument is it's not true. If I kill my wife, right? Mm -hmm which I'm not going to, I like her. Yeah. If, if, I, if, I, if I kill my wife, the chances that I'm gonna kill another human being are actually extraordinarily low. Right, this is, there's no, like people kill people they tend to know. The chances that I'm gonna kill a bunch of other people are really, really low. The idea that I'm gonna become a serial killer is not really true. Uh, plus, I mean, you, you're actually creating uh, a sort of um, millennium report problem, right? You actually have, what if, what if you just say, you're now doing pre-crime. You're saying you're more likely to commit crime in the future, so we're gonna put you in quarantine. The retributive theory of justice is basically this. You deserve to go to prison, mm -hmm. and not only do you deserve to go to prison, if we didn't put you in prison, then what you'd end up with is people coming after you to commit revenge on you, and then you'd have a cycle of violence that would actually lead to terrible things. So if you want to argue against free will on the basis that... Uh, I, it's, it's an inter it's, it, like I'm thinking about it on the spot, and it's a really interesting question. Yeah. I, I suppose I would say this. I suppose that I would say that I believe that in the end, Western civilization is based on a foundation of Judeo-Christian morality that is religious in nature, but I can't just say God. Like when people ask me a question, I can't just say God if I want to have the argument. Maybe at the root, if you say free will, mm -hmm. when you get down to the root root argument of a couple of these major things, yeah. then I will have to say God. Okay. Um, but I think that the vast majority of political argument, it's, uh, it's important not to just cite to the Bible or to a deity. All right. Thank you. you have a handshake? Yeah. I think there's something like a third of millennials, less than a third of millennials are conservative, and even less than that, um, millennials are evangelical. Something like 96% don't even have a, or that claim they're evangelical don't even have a biblical worldview. So as someone that was brought up with the traditions of Israel, I'm sure you have insight as to is how much stronger is the uh, religious persecution on leftist campuses? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy to be a religious person on campus. I'll answer the second question first. It's, it's, easier to be, it's not easy to be a, a religious person on campuses because you're perceived as stupid. I mean, the nice thing is if you do, you know, once you go to Harvard Law School, they can't say that anymore. 
but it's but uh, but they, but you get that a lot, right? It's the idea that you're a dummy for for believing in religion. And the truth is, all of Western civilization is based on a Judeo-Christian value system. It hasn't sprung up anywhere else. I mean, there are tons of cultures all over the globe, and none of them have the kind of civilization America does. And America, by the way, is still significantly more religious than Europe, which is not coincidentally one of the reasons why we are significantly more powerful than Europe. So, you know, when when they say that that you know you're a fool for believing in God. The truth is that belief in God is belief, right? It, you have to take a leap of faith. It can't be proved. It can't be something. It's not something that you can you can make a scientific hypothesis and then and then fulfill that hypothesis. But atheism can't be proved either. And there's no way to prove these sorts of intangibles. And what that means is that you can either choose to at least acknowledge. What I would say to people is, look, whether you believe in God personally is your own business. It is. It's, I, don't, I don't really care particularly. As a religious person, I care about your soul. But as a political person, it's your own business. I don't care. Um, it, but as a society, when we fail to acknowledge the value of Judeo-Christian religion steeped in the idea that every human being has equal worth under God, you end up very quickly devolving into a socialism that ends up demeaning human beings individually. Because there's never been a place on earth that wasn't like that. The fact is that the collective takes over. People worship. People are made to worship. And we will either worship God or we will worship the state or we'll worship ourselves. Right? Those, those tend to be the three choices. You're either a libertine or you're a communist or you're a conservative. Those are, those are sort of the three choices. Uh, so you know, I think that when it comes to defending religion, it's easier to defend the system of religion than particular religious belief because we all have different religions. We all have different religious beliefs. Even if you're – even among Orthodox Jews, there's a lot of diversity. of Each individual has their own relationship with God, and you can't argue anybody else into your relationship with God. What you can say is here is something that is unquestioned and undoubted. Judeo-Christian religion has created the foundation for the greatest civilization in the history of mankind. And ripping away the foundations of that civilization on behalf of a philosophy that really has never built – anything without those roots in judeo christian atheism modern atheism has its root in judeo-christian religion it does it doesn't exist in the islamic world right modern atheism the freedom to be an atheist only exists in the west it only exists in the, in the judeo-christian world the, the freedoms that the left bases its whole worldview on are within a milieu that was created by a religion it despises you can't just take a battering ram to the foundations of civilization and hope the superstructure stands. So that's my answer as far as God. Right. Now, uh, it's interesting to bring up the religiosity, the conversion to orthodoxy for your family, mm -hmm. because I think there's a prevailing ethos that religious people are a little stupider or naive or unthoughtful or intentionally unthoughtful. In my own experience, I find people who are not educated or necessarily intelligent can be quite religious, mm -hmm. and I've found that people who are extraordinarily intelligent or educated can be quite religious and often are, and then there's this middle ground of total atheism. Yeah, I think that's right, uh, and I think the reason that's right is because a lot of people who are hardcore atheists, I'm not talking about agnostics, because mm -hmm. I think the only evidence-based position on God is agnosticism. Sure, because, yeah, we can. Just, because there's no other evidence of, of any, like you can go either way. Um, but as far as kind of hardcore atheists, a lot of atheists who are very hardcore and very vocal about it, they seem to think they're the first people who ever figured out that like a virgin birth is kind of unlikely or that God <laughs> speaking from a mountaintop is kind of weird. Like they're the first people this ever occurred to in the history of humanity. Like it's brand new. No one's ever thought of this. Or they'll, they'll talk about the problem of theodicy and they'll, they'll sit around going, well, you know, I had a friend who died of cancer when they were young. How could a good God allow this? I mean, I'll bet you no religious thinker has ever talked about that. It's like there's 2,500 years of religious thought on exactly this topic. It is incredible that people will bring up this question as a, as a trump card. Right. They'll say, well, why would a good God let bad things happen? And you think, you're not asking me that. You could Google it, and you would get, <laughs> you would get eternal books about this. Right, and, and they may not satisfy you, but the idea there's no sort of explanation for mm -hmm. that that any religious person has ever thought. Like, they expect me to convert on the spot. You're mm -hmm. right, now I'm an atheist because you dropped that on me. No, I mean, most religious people have doubts. Mm -hmm. Most religious people understand there's a difference between faith and knowledge. That's why it's called faith. Mm -hmm. right? That's why it's called belief. You're a believer, right? You're not a knower. You're a believer. And there's a clip of me saying that I know in God, but I didn't say I know God, right? I said I know in God because no human being is capable of knowing God. I know the place of humanity in the world because I believe there is a God, mm -hmm. but I think that that is a, a different standard than religious person who never even thinks about whether God exists or what God wants from us. I think that in, 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 it's written right into the Bible. I mean, I think that the, the key moment in, in biblical history, there, there are a bunch of them that people sort of point out in the Old Testament anyway. The key moment for Christians is very easy, but for, for Jews, there <laughs> yeah, are a couple. It was just one. I guess two. There's the birth and the, and the death and resurrection. Right, but exactly. It's very it's, simple. It really boils it down in the sequel. In the sequel, <laughs> they really boil it down. But in the, but in the original, uh, the, there, there, are a few different, uh, there are a few different sort of points that people use in, as inflection.